all for you, man. That's all for you. How are you, man? Uh, really good. So we have Ray Hunt here. I heard you having a backyard barbecue that we're all invited to. Is that <laughs> yeah, the truth? Yeah. We have a small event coming yeah, up. Yeah, well, tell me about it. So uh, the Life is Beautiful Festival is at the end of October. It's October 26th and 27th. We announced our lineup uh, on Monday. It's a music, food, art, and learning festival. We got the Killers, Kings of Leon, Imagine Dragons, uh, Passion Pit, and just about every other band on the planet. Yeah, so these are amazing names. And um, like, what, what can we expect? This is it. This is the inaugural year. So what we're doing is effectively combining um, South by Southwest use of Austin's historic cityscape with yeah. the, the intimacy and the, the high level of curation that you see at a, at a Coachella style festival. So we're combining those two, fencing off 15 city blocks of downtown Las Vegas and creating a, a, the, the first ever true urban style festival. Uh, yeah, so we're building, really we're building stages everywhere. We're going to have a big culinary village. We have uh, culinary demonstrations, lessons. We're going to have theatrical shows. We have Cirque du Soleil bringing eight shows. Uh, it's going to be tremendous. Okay, so tell me about the feeling that you're expecting. Try to give me like a walkthrough of what I would experience if I bought a ticket and... You know, took yeah. my shirt off and got crazy and probably tattooed up. And, you know, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, the the beauty of um, the beauty of this festival is it, it, we feel like it's one of a kind. So there isn't a festival that combines food, music, art, and learning with this level of depth of programming um, a anywhere else in the world. And the other thing that's incredible about festivals, just by design, is the culture and the style and the personality and the, the social nature is all defined by the people who are attending. Right. So there's only so much we do. So we bring we bring the talent and we bring the the, the footprint and the general uh, aesthetic, but um, the, the dress code, the language, the way people get together, that's created on the spot. That's created on the yeah. fly. So that's I, what I'm excited for. Actually. There's yeah. only so much that I, that I can expect. The rest of it, uh, we're, we're excited to see what the, what, what the Las Vegas community brings and what the entire region brings and the entire world brings when they attend it ultimately. Okay, and then so out of the feedback you've been getting so far, what's the most exciting thing that you've heard from people who are going to attend? You know, it's, um, I, I think what, what made me nervous at the beginning was was whether people were going to understand the the true collaboration and, um, and and the meshing of all these different categories, and uh, it, the beauty of it is people are seeing uh, what we're trying to do very clearly. So they're seeing the, the the musical rock stars as rock stars, but the culinary lineup people are referring to as rock stars of, of oh, the kitchen, right. which is really it's cool. Kind of hungry. Yeah, yeah. So um, and we still haven't announced the entire um, theatrical and arts program and the entire learning series, but I think we're going to see the same level of adoption, the same level of understanding, and that's a beauty of it. You're going to have four different types of audiences coming together and sharing what they love with each other. Nice. Okay, well, where can people keep updated? Like, where, what websites should they check out? What should we throw here on your lower thirds? Well, so all of our information is at lifeisbeautifulfestival.com and tickets right. go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Ooh, ooh. Be there, you know? 10.05 and it's over. Yeah. I know how these things go. <laughs> it's going to be like getting Justin Bieber tickets. Like, it's just not going to happen, you know? It is going to be nothing like getting Justin Bieber tickets. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you for coming and talking to us. Thank we really you, appreciate man. it. I'm looking forward to it. And I'll be there 10 o'clock tomorrow. Thanks. I'll see you there. Okay. You too. Bye. UNLV in the house, I'm huh? I'm happy, yeah. All right, so UNLV Business Startup Center. Talk about it and what it means to the people who are watching the show. Sure, yeah. Well, we're really excited to be the beer sponsor for tonight. Thank and you. Uh, oh, course, yeah, cheers, cheers. Um, but yeah, so we're a new um, entity at UNLV. We're really here to be a resource for the, both the campus and the community. Um, there never really be, has been a resource on UNLV to, to apply business tactics when a startup needs it, and that's really what we want to be there for. So whether you're you know, needing help putting together a strategic plan, whether you need to help with market research or access to a number of pieces of data that we may be able to help you with. When you're, when you're going through planning and putting together your startup or when you're you know, getting close to go, going through rounds of funding or whatever, we can be there as a resource for you to help you through some of those, uh, you know, negotiating through some of those things that you may never have done before and, and we think we can be a benefit. And oh yeah, we're completely free, so uh, that helps a little bit as well. Right now, you're actually helping Ticket Cake. So since you've got the NDA, so other companies, don't worry, it doesn't talk about them. Yeah. But if you want to share, which I do, our experience is that we met with you and you like literally just popped into a computer system and brought down some information that would have cost us thousands of dollars. Yeah. That's what we want to really yeah, be is people. provide some sort of extension to your team, to others' teams that we're working with, so that they have a little bit bigger footprint to be able to do these things. So, you know, like I said, whether it's data, we can tap into certain
certain databases that supply vast amounts of market research. If you want to identify what your market looks like, what your total market or your 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 your, um, your accessible market may be, um, what some of the barriers to entry to the market may be, or other things like that, we can pull all that data down. A lot of really smart people that usually people pay a lot of money for have already done a lot of that research, and we can tap into it for you. But yeah, we we're bringing on um, both interns from you know the law program, the MBA program, who you know may be able to help you get uh, further your market research if you have specific information you want to find out. Um, we can put them out into the community or the you know tap them into uh, other resources, finances, um, accounting, you know whatever you may need a, a help with. We have experts on staff that uh, that can help you, and so we really just want to be a resource okay. for the university to tap into the greater community and completely free. So you're targeting yeah. the small to the mid-sized businesses. So you guys that have new ideas or need a little bit of help, um, you definitely want to talk to them. And where can they go to find out more? Yeah, I mean, the easiest way is to find us on Twitter, UNLV, at UNLV Startup. Um, I'll leave some business cards here, but you can um, you can tap into us through, through UNLV.com slash startup as well. Um, both of those are the easiest ways to get a hold of us. But uh, uh, come talk to us. We'd love to be a resource, and, and we'd love to help you out. Yeah, well, and thanks for the beer. When was the last Absolutely. time you had a beer, Boeing? Take you back? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't have a surprise for you. I'm not a few hours, <laughs> at least. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Justin. Right, I appreciate thanks. you coming yeah. on. Thank you. This event right here is, man, it's just, bring, it's just home to me, basically. Uh, this event's going to be hosted at the uh, TPC Summerlin uh, Golf Course uh, Country Club. My name is Mario Luna. I'm the owner of Elevage Wine Group. I uh, conduct wine consultation. So this is my event yeah, there. Wine. Yeah. This yes. is why you turned down yes. the beer. This is why you turned the beer? I said so you turned down the beer. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's to, expert, it's yeah. to give you many options. Okay. <laughs> But my event at Apple Tea by the Tea, um, it's a high-end networking affair uh, featuring uh, wine and cocktail uh, pairings along with the food and the percentage of the proceeds are going to the Lily Claire Foundation and uh, 
Keith, and uh, that's, that will be at, in attendance for this event, the two founders, uh, brings it home to me because I'm a diabetic. I have shortcomings to get this event, but prior to my business getting started, so to get the opportunity to actually do an event for the charity, the percentage of the proceeds going to them, it means a lot to me. So the event, uh, one week from tonight, June 13th, uh, from 7 to 10 p.m. at that golf course. And okay. the tickets are on Ticket Cake. Yeah, we've got the link to the Ticket Cake right there, and then, yeah, June 13th, 7 p.m. What a, what a great venue, man. That's going to be so, that's just such a beautiful place. Very lucky to have it there. Yeah. So, yes. okay. So everybody check that out. Apple tea by the tea. All right, Melissa, let's, uh, let's talk about some of these new stories. You got Launch Key. Yeah. 30 under 30. I know. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, they're such a productive group. It drives me nuts. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they were actually mentioned as, you know, was it 30 under 30? Um, and they have a beta coming up, which I'm really excited about. So I'll actually be able to test out their application and, you know, reinvent passwords, which is amazing. So I'm really excited for them um, to get that pushed out. Okay. Very cool group. Launch key. Yeah, go launch key. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Proud of them. Jeff and Yo and Devin. Good job, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so Lorelai, Mario, I appreciate you guys coming out to talk about everything on the podcast and uh, good luck to both of you. I know you don't need it because you're both killing it, but <laughs> these guys would be grand of applause. Thank you for So we have a man here who literally wrote the book on Ruby on Rails, and we're going to help the audience understand what the landscape of development looks like and some of the things that they can use to get started for a good long-term track. So his parents and friends call him by his real name, but you may know him as Radar. So please put your hands together one more time for Mr. Ryan B. Right, so in 2010, I was asked to write a book by Manning called Rails 3 in Action. And I went through about four bottles of scotch and so many bottles of wine. But a year and a half later, a year and a half later, I finished it and it's out there now. So it walks you through developing a full Rails application. It starts off, chapter one is like, this is scaffold, please don't use it. Chapter two is, this is testing, please use it. And chapter three walks you through building the foundations. And from there, you build up this full featured application. Okay. Written in Ruby on Rails. Okay, and now there's a lot of different programs languages besides Rails, even though I know it's probably your favorite, and yeah. it's a very, very effective one, but let's start with like the 30,000 foot view, and like tell me what's going on with the programming landscape, and for people that have ideas, and they're just diving into technology, why is, it, why is Rails the right move, and where is it not the right move? Rails is, well, it really depends on what kind of application you want to build. I mean, if you're building something like a forum system or an e-commerce platform, then Rails is probably a better option for you. But if you're building something that's processing a lot of data in the background, you probably don't want to use R Ruby because it's a high-level language. You want to use something lower level than that, like Go or Elixir by Jose Valim is coming out. Uh, it's based on Erlang. You should really check that out. And languages like that. Right, and now how does someone check their ID to see if it requires a high language or a low language? You would just talk with the people who are involved in that community. And like I'm open, I'm open to questions like that. There's other people in the Rails community who are also open to questions like that. Just ask around. People will tell you. And then what, what resources would you recommend? I mean, I know you're a big contributor to Stack Overflow. Is that where you tell people to go for the very beginning just to get an idea of what's possible? Yeah, if you want to, well, Stack Overflow is kind of like you've got a specific programming question and you want a specific answer to that question. If you want a more general answer, going to meetups or talking over IRC with people is a better option, I think, than Stack Overflow. Okay. Yeah. And, and you met with the, the Ruby group here in Las Vegas, right? Yeah, you, I did last so night. Tell me how that experience went. That was pretty good. There was about 35 people there last night and this like 80s villain theme, you know, like <laughs> Dr. Evil. It's like if Dr. Evil had a lair in Las Vegas, that would be the place. <laughs> 
but it's really cool. And the internet there is insanely fast. Now you're talking about the innovation oh center, gosh. right? Yeah, innovation yeah, center. Okay. That's right. So you went you toured Switch and you're out at the innovation. Yeah, center. today and oh my gosh. Yeah, it was an amazing. The tech is facility. overwhelming. Yeah. Good. And then so you've about 30 people showed up, and then did you just uh, you guys build a little prototype product, or what is it like when you attend one of these? Events? So they had a who's hiring and who's looking for work, and then and they had a code cutter and some presentations. They had three presentations. They had the student who came on who's new to Rails. I think last weekend or the weekend before he got started and he built this Twitter clone in a week or two without knowing any Ruby, without knowing any Rails. And he built like follower system, avatar uploading, admin interface, and he knew nothing about it and he just did it. And it's amazing to see the new guys jumping into it and learning. Nice. Yeah. So you have some good, do you have any other good stories about people you've seen like take a, a Rails application from nothing to something really quickly and really got inspired by it that would help inspire other people? Not off the top of my head. Not off the top of your head? <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, how long did it take you to like, get into Rails? I mean, how, uh, how does your story gee, start? Gee. Uh, well, I asked, well, I was trying to build a forum system in Ruby on Rails when I first got started. and. My first question, and I think one of my first questions in the Ruby on Rails channel was, why can't I call a class thread? The answer to that is because thread is a standard library class in Ruby, and I was trying to override the standard library class, and things didn't go so well. I got yelled at for doing that, <laughs> and I got told to read a book, and so I didn't read a book, and I ended up just kind of fumbling around in the dark, and I ended up building this forum system, and now I've just worked up from there. I got really. you, and then so you actually built the book as an answer to your own problems, right? Something I'm sure you wish you had when you started. Yeah, yeah, that's that's main one of the main reasons why I wrote the book is because I wanted a book that covered how I view developing an application. It's not let's just throw these models and controls and helpers and views together, just and get it done. You have to have something that's su sustainable. If you don't have something that's sustainable, if you make a change and it breaks your application and your client tells you that it's broken, that's wrong. Your test should be telling you that it's broken, not your client. So that's what my book covers is this test very a very large emphasis on test driven development. Okay, and then so the thing about what brought you here to Las Vegas. So I know you're staying in the crash pad um, right. when you get the invite. So tell me how did you get intertwined with the downtown project and um, what do you think about it so far? Uh, well a couple of weeks ago my boss Sean was here and he was talking to some people. I think he's got some friends here or something. Friends in high places. Sean, yeah. Sean probably. yeah yeah you know the he's Sean. everywhere you know, Sean. you know yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like Kaiser Soze of the Rails community. <laughs> <clears throat> and so I just came here. Um, he said, like, I was here vacationing with my girlfriend in D.C. and New York City one week each. And then he's like, you want to go to Vegas? I'm like, all right. Right. So I come to That's Vegas. That's how it happens. Yeah. yeah, you just kind of end up here. Yeah. And then uh, so you've seen a lot of different tech communities. What do you think about ours? What's your opinion of what you've learned so far? It's burgeoning. It's really good that you guys have got this passionate crowd here. Like, you've got the downtown project, which I think is a fantastic idea. Take this area that's not really techy. Throw some tech people at it, throw some money at it, and watch it grow. <laughs> it's, it's like, like a chia pet, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Like awesome, right? I was going to say herb garden, but chia pet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you just gotta water it every day, you know, like water it every day. All right, well, let's tell everybody about your blog and where they can pick your book up at. <clears throat> sure, my blog is my name, which is Ryan Big. That's R Y A N B I G G dot com. B I G G. B I G G. That's right. And my book, I've got Rails Three in Action, which you can pick up on Manning's website. You just enter Rails Three in Action into Google, and that'll come up. Multi tenancy with Rails covers how to build an application similar to GitHub with Rails. Enter that into Google as well, and that'll come up. You can also get a discount on that, $10. It's $10 all this week up until, I think, Saturday, maybe Sunday, ah. if, you use the t if you use the code Vegas Tech. OK, sounds yeah. good. All right, well, thank you for coming out and visiting with us. We'll get people on Rails. Yeah. So we'll get some maps out there. So thank you for coming June Tech Week is right around the corner, bringing about 25 guests from across the tech landscape and around the globe. Listen to them share. Uh, listen to them share some inspirational thoughts and knowledge of their fields. Join in from the 12th through 15th to find out and to find out more information. Check out Tech Cocktail. At the end of the week on the 15th is the Node.js Bootcamp. It's a free event for developers and designers who want to learn from Node experts in the community. You'll learn how to build your first app from scratch and no experience is necessary. Learn more on meetup.com. 
Following that, on the 19th, is the T-Band Luncheon. Sunny Tara, the president and CEO of DocBeat, will be talking about the newest trends and innovations with the digitization of the healthcare with a Q&A to follow. Register on tband.com. And if you're in the mood to make Sunday brunch, help out other couples by cooking for families at the Ronald McDonald House on the 23rd. All proceeds made from, this, from these amazing couples will be donated to the house. Find out more information on how you can help on TicketCake.com. After that, join the inaugural Vegas Give Camp from the 20th through the 30th at Work in Progress. Give Camp is a weekend work marathon where tech and marketing pros donate their time to enhance the build and build software solutions for local nonprofits. They're now accepting applications from nonprofits and reservations for volunteers. Sign up on VegasGiveCamp.org. And we've talked about several BD Bar events a few times, but here to talk about proper rundown is Ruben. All right. Well, let's talk about this uh, summer. What concerts. up, dude? And, uh, well, we got tons of them. Um, for example, next Thursday, we got a uh, Starfucker playing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm excited. Yeah. Wait for it. It's funny to say that. Uh, Starfucker playing. I think we're um, stuck here. <laughs> we got uh, Lord Huron in July, as well as uh, Pickwick. Um, uh, Bands have terrible names. They really yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Terrible names. The summer of. Well, it's, you know, pretty much. Okay, so. Bands of DJ like. Well, so tell me, what, what's, your, what's your big nights down at the beauty bar? What can people expect? Um, uh, well, typically the weekends really are the busier ones, but, uh, you know, I keep the bookings over there kind of like a variety show. You know? Yeah. Never know what to expect, really. I usually end up there like super drunk, so I love it. Like I just end up like <laughs> at the back of the beauty bar. Like I don't know how I got there, but I'm really happy. So I have good associations. <laughs> I notice unless people are here to see a band, like yeah. they're just like, how the did I get the here? Night. The place is either at the start of the night or the end of the night. It seems for most people. <laughs> Yes. No, we like it. All right, so they can check out the uh, thebeautybar.com forward slash Las Vegas. We also have some stuff up on tickycake.com where they can buy tickets. Um, and then, yeah, it looks like you have uh, Starfucker on Thursday, <laughs> June 13th. We have Lord Huron on Thursday, July 18th. And then Prickwick on Friday, July 12th. So thanks like for making me say all the swear words. Yeah. I know, I love it. <laughs> We also got two villains this Saturday, you know, that's a normal sounding one. <laughs> okay, so everybody check out the beauty bar, it's right here on Fremont East, and thank you for coming out to talk to us. Oh, appreciate no it. Thanks. You people out there and looking forward to it. Thank you guys for coming out to the podcast. So appreciate it. Like a flashback, Vegas Tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.